Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be making a mount for a fog buster for my Avid CNC router. I've been using this a lot for aluminum and I'm making some changes. As you can see I've got a vise here and I've also got some T-slot table and in addition to all of these modifications I'm also going to be adding a fog buster. So I decided to make a bracket to mount it to the end of the gantry so it'll kind of sit right there. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and start by taking a look at um, the various mounts that I've tried to make that didn't really work out so well. So first off, for those of you not familiar with what a fog buster is, it's a coolant method that uses some kind of reservoir tank that gets pressurized and then the air and the liquid mixture get sent into this little head. This is an actual fog buster head and it is mixed and it just kind of spits out. It doesn't have a fog um, it, or a mist. It just kind of has like a spit or a sputtering. And this is ideal because it doesn't create a big fog around your workpiece. It's nothing that you can inhale, things like that. It's just a lot safer and it actually delivers the coolant right to the cutting head and also blows away the chip. So it's a really nice method of cooling for cutting aluminum and other metals. So what I need to do is mount the tank or the reservoir somewhere on the gantry and then run the hoses back. I'm on the opposite side of the gantry right now just simply because I can't get the camera on the other side. So we'll use this side for demonstration purposes. So what I want to do is mount it somewhere like this and then I can run all of the hoses and tubing back into the cable track that goes behind the gantry. And I tried a couple different methods. Um, I 3D printed a couple things that would mount on these top two bolts, something like that, um, another one like that. And I tried all sorts of different things and all of these had the same problem. With this being full of liquid and this setting out here, it would just kind of bend and bow. And I'm using glass reinforced nylon and I even have on this one two steel rods that run the length of it. And unfortunately, it's just never enough. It still kind of sags on the end. So it's time to just machine something out of aluminum. And I'm gonna make something very similar to one of these pieces. I'm just gonna get rid of the flange and it's just gonna bolt directly into the end cap. I found a piece of stock in my parts bin that should work out pretty well. I need to cut it down to size, um, but it should be about the right dimensions. The final part's about half an inch and this is about 5 8 so it'll give me something to hold on to. Once I laid everything out, I brought it over to the bandsaw just to cut down to size, and it did take two cuts, one to cut the length and then the other to cut the final size. And then once all the cuts were made, I brought it over to the mill and then just faced off one surface just to give me two parallel surfaces that I could use to mount inside the vise. I modeled this part in SolidWorks and I chose the top center as the origin. So I'm using my Heimer to indicate off the top and then indicate off all of the sides to find the center of the stock. From here, the machining is pretty straightforward. I'm using my um, standard recipe of a quarter inch end mill to two flute end mill, and I'm going about 50 inches per minute, about 25 thou step over, and in the adaptive tool paths, I'm doing two depths of cut. So I'm doing a 0.26 inch step down, so it'll take two passes, and then the final contour is going to be a full depth of cut all the way around just to clean up everything. But it's a pretty simple little tool path here, nothing really too complicated. And then I used a chip breaking drill operation to drill the four holes. Thank you. 
Since the top of the part has two parallel surfaces, I can just flip this over in the vise, indicate the zero from the bottom of the part, and then just use a shear hog to remove the rest of the stock. So here is the near finished part. Everything looks good. Um, need to just drill a couple holes in the end so this can mount to this piece. I took off the end cap on the CNC router. Just uh, make sure there's a couple holes at the bottom. Undo all of these and then you have to undo the wires that go through this channel and you can pull this right off. So the next step is I need to drill the mounting holes because this will go in like that, so I need to put a couple holes just in the end of this. I just used the Heimer to find the zero point along this edge and then the midpoint along my y-axis. I know that my hole is going to be a quarter inch in, that's going to be that one dead in the center, and then the other one's going to be one and a quarter inches out, and then the other one's going to be one and a quarter inch out from that. So I'm just going to manually position the mill and drill those three holes. So I've got my mounting holes in the top of the end cap and those will correspond with that, such as that. However, I need to drill the holes into the end of this, but the biggest problem is that when I set this inside my vise, there's not enough Z height for the drill and the drill chuck. So I'm gonna to have to do this a different way. So I'm basically just going to jig this off of the end of my workbench, basically hold that like that, clamp that in place, clamp it all up and then just drill through it from the side like that. So I'm drilling through the holes into this. So let's give that a shot. This setup works pretty well. I've used this before when I have to drill into the end of um, long aluminum pieces for some of my combat robots. And um, yeah, it works out just fine. I ended up just kind of spotting the hole. I didn't really go in all that deep. I just kind of spotted the top of the hole just enough so that I can put it on a drill press and finish out the hole later. Good enough. I clamped the bracket to a 1-2-3 block just to make sure that it was perpendicular to the table and then just drilled the holes out to their final depth. I think I went on in a little bit deeper than half an inch, which should be plenty. And once the holes were complete, it was time to tap them. I was going to leave this process out, but I figured someone would be like, hey, when did you tap these? Well, here it is. I'm tapping the holes right now. There you go. Since the screw heads are going to be on the inside of this end cap, I need to do a counter bore on the inside so that I attach the bracket and then attach the end cap to the router itself. And um, I'm just using a counter bore bit just to add a counter bore. And um, have I mentioned how much I love my drill press? This thing is just really amazing with aluminum. You can just chew right into it. Love it. Before I throw the bracket into the vibratory tumbler, I decide to add a corner radius just so it matches the end cap. Now I could have used the Tormach or I could have used the CNC router, but I decided to try the router table, which I just installed a couple weekends ago, and just see how it goes. It gives an okay um, surface finish. It's definitely not very rigid at all, so it kind of has a little bit of chattering, but a sanding block takes care of that. And I'll show you what it looks like after it gets out of the tumbler. And here is the finished bracket attached to the end plate. It turned out okay. Um, I think the radius actually turned out really nice after sanding. Um, it kind of blends right into the main end cap just fine. And then you can see this is how it's mounted from the back. The only reason I'm using stainless bolts here is this is the only thing they had in the size I needed at the hardware store, so I just ended up using stainless, but there's no reason to use stainless. So yeah, I think the only thing left to do now is to get this on the machine and finish out this video. 
Since these machines come as kits, they're pretty easy to work on because, well, one, you put it together so you kind of know how it goes together, and two, they're kind of made to be put together and tinkered with just because of the nature of it being a DIY kit. So everything went together just fine. They just had to remember to run the wires through the gantry, but other than that, it's really simple, and this is what it looked like to install the bracket. If anyone's looking to do this modification on their own machine, you should know that this is an aftermarket water tank. It's not the one that comes with the fog buster. I just happen to have an additional fog buster head, so that's what I'm using. I do have a link to the tank that I'm using down below, and you can just get it on Amazon. Um, you could make a bracket that would have the same hole pattern as the official fog buster tank as well. They kind of have a similar hole pattern. So here is what the mount looks like hooked up to the water reservoir tank. The other thing to note is that the cable carrier, cable track holder is pretty close, um, but I made sure that there is enough room to get this out and in. I just kind of had to angle it down just a little bit. So yeah, next step is to get all the plumbing and all the tubing hooked up. Thankfully, I'm really close to all the cable tracks so I can run it here and here, which is really nice. I don't have to worry about any of that. Um, just need to get that all hooked up. I am going to be using an airbrush compressor to power this. Um, I did some tests with my other fog buster and it actually seems to work really well. So um, that's what's gonna be powering this whole thing just so I don't have to have another run from an air compressor over here. Uh, this is a lot quieter, it's a lot simpler, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, in the upcoming video, I'll get this all hooked up, get the fog buster on the actual head, get the air plumbed, and get a solenoid hooked up so it can be controlled with the controller. And um, yeah, hopefully I will be cutting aluminum with a fog buster. So thanks for watching. Um, be sure to check out more updates on my channel. Be sure to check out my Facebook page for any updates, and uh, see you next time.